Was this the ink place? No, I don't think so. What? Hello. You look like you belong here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> This spinning wheel. So, so cute in here. Oh, the pitcher and bowl. Is this the one where you can stay overnight? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, you want to see it first. See, look, there's turkeys. Oh, wow. oh my god. The They're right there. Oh, that's right. I don't know if there's enough room in there for all. All right, 1809 Pioneer Cabin, take two. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, don't hit your head, y'all. Don't hit your head. Oh, so cute in here. I would never want to sleep in here. Oh my goodness. Why would you never want to sleep in here? Well, there's some light coming through the rafters. We have families who sleep in here for a weekend. Yeah, see, I said we could stay here. Wow. Yeah, I was. What? I think it would be pleasant. Yeah, so you can just. You have the little trundle bed you just pull out and. Pull out the trundle bed. I mean, you don't have to hike up any stairs to, like, go to bed or anything, so. It's all right here. Everything in one spot. So, how does a whole family sleep here if there's only one bed? There's two. Oh, there's, two. Oh, wait, there's the so trundle. Oh, but well, when they first moved here and bought land in the middle of the forest and chopped down enough trees to build this house, you wouldn't have made it to the road or to the fence, and it would have been nothing but trees, trees, and more trees. So this was the only building. So although we have a loft, oh, that's there's where a the bachelor had to keep all of his building materials oh. and tools and farm tools and seed for planting and everything so the family basically at that time was mom dad and three kids the three children shared the trundle bed when it was pulled out at night Ooh. but you notice the trees are we're not completely surrounded by forest right now and that's because open hearth burns an acre of wood a year so between what we've been burning up what we've made things with what we built things with we have been pushing the forest back mm. And actually opening up the land so we could actually farm it because you can't farm with all those trees. Interesting. So although the house was built in 1809, the way you see our farm, it's 1820. Okay. By 1820, the Hatchlers have eight children. In here? Mm. The two wow. still share the trundle bed, but now luckily Mr. Hatchler has the barn so he doesn't need the whole loft for storage. So the older children have mattresses thrown on the floor up in the loft. It's not a bedroom like we think of bedrooms. They don't even have bed frames, but they at least have nice soft mat mattresses mm. that they've made up there so that they can sleep up there. Nice. Now, dealing with our chocolate today, this is my chocolate pot. Chocolate pots often have handles like this for pouring. Yep. Most of them, but not all of them, have a mole and arrow in it. If you don't have one of those, you have to use a spoon because you have to froth it up. So Starbucks did not come up with the idea of heavy foamy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around for a long time. And, Despite popular and, belief. And there, were, there were chocolate houses throughout Europe. Like today we have Starbucks coffee houses there. They had chocolate houses because chocolate was the drink. Tea, what, for breakfast you had chocolate, Bre uh, tea was the close second, coffee is a distant third until we come to the Civil War time, mm. okay, huh. so we want to drink thing. Now, I have a, it says there I have a chocolate drink, well actually I have hot chocolate, but if I say it's hot chocolate, people go, oh, hot chocolate, that's no big deal, because we have hot chocolate all the time, well no, you probably don't. When you've come in after been outside in the snow and you want hot chocolate, you actually have hot cocoa. Mm. Ah. Chocolate has two parts, the cocoa powder and the cocoa butter. I mean, it's all mixed together normally, but scientists in the 1600s, 
figured out how to separate it so they could make cocoa for making cocoa for cookies and things and then they learned how to put something in it to make it called Dutch cocoa which is less acidic and there's a lot of things but we only talk but anyhow your chocolate hat is those two things are mixed together all right they have separated it so when you're drinking hot cocoa you're getting the cocoa powder which they've mixed put with sugar and they put with powdered milk so when you add your milk or your water to it you end up with the cocoa and it melts so you make a milk cocoa kind of thing but that's cocoa my hot chocolate has the cocoa and it has the cocoa butter mm. so comparing my hot chocolate to hot cocoa is like comparing whole milk to skim milk mm. hmm. the difference of how thick a whole milk is when you think of compared to skim milk because whole milk has the fat skim milk does not okay. my hot chocolate has the fat the cocoa butter cocoa hot cocoa does not hot cocoa is a lighter brown color my hot chocolate is the deep dark what we think of chocolate brown color mm. all right interesting mine is made by taking my bar of chocolate not a candy bar but a bar of, which you may have seen in some other places the bars that they had could either be the size of a stick of butter or they could be bigger squares but i would have that jan smith is talking about grating for chocolate graters I would grate my chocolate, put it with hot water, and then I would get my drink. So there's no milk involved, it's just my chocolate. Now, however, my chocolate is the chocolate that was made at that time. And with the cocoa powder and the cocoa butter, they have also added a little bit of sugar, not as much as modern taste might like, and some spices. So when you buy American Heritage chocolate made by Mars, but made the way it was in the 1700s, 1800s, it's going to have those spices in it as well. So, if you like dark chocolate, you're more likely to like my hot chocolate drink. If you don't like dark chocolate, you're a milk, milk chocolate fan, well then cocoa is better for you because it's got the milk and it doesn't have the, the, the deep richness. Now, how can I, as a pioneer out in the middle of nowhere, how can I have chocolate? Well, because it's one of the things I made sure I brought with me. <laughs> As we're getting our wagon ready, you know, we're selling, well, we don't need the dining room furniture, sell that because we can make our own. Uh, but we do need our pots and pans. We want our pottery. Uh, we want the spinning wheel. We want, we'll take the bed apart, wrap the rope around wooden pieces, empty out the mattress, the tick, fold it up like a big pillowcase, put that in the wagon. We're trying to decide what we're going to take in the wagon with us. We, things that we can't make our own. All right, we can grow things, but we can't grow spices. So I'm going to have this box, which has containers in it that have different spices so that I have my spices that I can bring with me. And I'm going to take that with me, but I'm also going to make sure I have chocolate to bring with me. Because as I said, that was the drink of the time. So we want hmm. to make sure we have it. Now we have an excerpt from a diary from the Boughton family. The Boughton family moved to Victor. They came from farther east and they moved to Victor. You know, and they've got Victor working on again. It's at Bowden Hill. So that's where their, their farm was. They are coming, as I said. Wagon being pulled by oxen. You walk next to it because it's so full of all your stuff. Now they are doing this in February. <laughs> walking in across New York in February. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Why in February? Well, because they want to be here for spring planting. Yeah. Wow. Plus, if like, weren't, wasn't it if there was like any bodies of water to cross, it would be like frozen, so That's you could cross true. it. Also, okay. So here's the excerpt. We traveled 13 miles the day we left Colonel Danford's. Colonel Colonel Reed's family and mine, numbering 14, camped that night under a hemlock tree, built a camp of hemlock boughs had a warm, brisk fire, made chocolate, and although my wife had a young child, we had a comfortable time of it. His wife just walked 13 miles carrying a child. <laughs> they are living, they are doing this in February, and their home for the night is a lean-to of hemlock boughs with a fire in front of it. But they had chocolate, so they had a comfortable <laughs> time of it. I don't know if he asked his wife that she thought it was a comfortable time, but that was the explanation <laughs> that despite everything, 
They had hot chocolate and they had a comfortable time of it. And at the end of June, I had uh, Grandma, Grandpa, and their 13 year old, two of their 13 year old grandsons who lived here. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so cute. Are they allowed to sleep in the loft? Did I no, no. <laughs> no. No. We have the we have the two beds, and if you need more than that, uh, we provide <laughs> extra ticking that get filled, but they end up just being thrown on the floor down here. We don't go. But we, one, we don't trust the ladder. Two, there's nothing up there but lots of cobwebs and spiders. Ooh. <laughs> And maybe the mouse. I don't know oh. where the mouse comes at where he stays. Oh, he oh there's drives, a mouse. He drives me crazy. Yes. Oh, fun a mouse times. He bothers us at night. He, oh. He has. He has. <laughs> mouse. <laughs> eaten my cover. <gasps> oh no. Gotten into my corn into my cornmeal. So I said, well, let's put the plate on top. Yeah. It must be mighty mouse because he managed to knock the plate off. So now oh. we put the rock on top too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We made of pioneer Thanks. techniques. If you, were, if you live here, then obviously you're here all the time. But in our reality, the museum, nobody's here from four o'clock until nine the next morning. Right. So mm. the mouse thinks he has free reign. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you like your survey, so you get your little square of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Got skins for the curtains. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Yeah, on a daily. What? You can all experience what Greg feels on a daily with the doors. <laughs> we have finished up our time here. We had a great time. Everyone's giving thumbs up. Yes. And the guys are like in front of us. <laughs> Greg said it was epic and Andy's thrilled. <laughs> So we had a really good time at the museum. I think my favorite part was the outdoor games, like right at the beginning. Like that was so fun. Like we were all just like playing together and oh my goodness, like you don't you don't get to like walk on stilts and like do like the old fashioned games um, like every day. So that was really fun. The one part that was really funny is so I have like um, I don't film like on my phone. I actually have like a Canon camera on like a small tripod and <laughs> this one little girl saw me vlogging and she was just like, oh, is that an old fashioned camera? And I was just like, um, <laughs> well from 2013, <laughs> which to me that's not old fashioned, but you know, she, I don't even know if she looks like she could have been born yet at that time. So that was hilarious. Um, but yeah, we just had a really nice time. We saw a baseball game. We saw some beautiful houses and the quilts and just it, it was a, such a nice time and I hope you enjoyed coming along with us. I love making like videos with historical aspects to them. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, did give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Hit the little bell notification and comment if you'd like. Thanks friends. Bye.